see the way that we've grown apart I don't like it at all Do you see the way that we've gone too far Drifting off of our course do you see the ways that we let plastic cover the ocean like snow? But snow it always melts with the seasons change in the summer So the months go water, one was all before Oh, how much is left to burn? <laughs> Lately I've been worried I don't know where to it is that I do belong Lately, I've been too busy to smell the bottle brush Just chasing laps around the sun And I sat here and cried So running from my eyes wondering How the fuck will I end up with you? And you just laugh and smile Shake your head and remind me that all good things can come true Oh, how much has left to learn The ways we had gone too far We need now more than ever before To come together Put our differences apart Stop drifting off of our course Do you see the ways that we need our reefs Just like trees along the shore and if it knows to help the half of what we're breathing for ourselves Out of sight and on the ocean floor Oh, how much is left to learn Lately I've been worried I don't know where to it is that I do belong Lately I've been too busy to smell the bottle Chasing laps around the sun And I sat here and cried So running from my eyes Just wondering how the fuck Will I end up with you And you just laugh and smile Shake your head and remind me that so, good afternoon I'm here having a cup of tea With Mr Nathan Ball Good afternoon everybody yeah. <laughs> Nathan, firstly what tea are we drinking? We're drinking a classic English breakfast tea um, Which I'm honoured to have got the Ziggy on during the tour, a, uh, a very special tradition back home, um, and we've taken on a little cup of tea every afternoon since, haven't we? It's, it's been a joyous part of my day, yeah. and it's going to be sad when I don't have you to have a cup of tea with every passing moment, but um, Nathan, you are, uh, we've been friends for probably four years now, going on, yeah, this is the fourth year, um, and I first came out on tour with you um, through Holland, doing house shows. Um, since then, we've done our various different tours, spent time apart, done shows back again together. You're here in Australia. Is this your first time touring in Australia? It is, yeah. Okay. And how have you found it so far? <laughs> it's been unbelievable. Certainly can't complain. I sent someone the other day getting in the sea 10 minutes before a sound check. is <laughs> something I'll never get used to. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah, we're used to trudging up and down the motorways in northern UK. Um, but it's been unreal. I mean, absolute dream. Look at this. And it's really, you said something really interesting about the like the surf culture around, you know, particularly the coastline of UK, um, where you spend a lot of time. And you, you said a, a really funny passing comment about how the music reflects like the landscape and the weather, and people surf the surf scenes into like that. Maybe you'd go as far as saying darker Ben Howard stuff, or yeah. um, for example, your music obviously has grown throughout the the UK surf community um, and well beyond, but. Do you think being now spending time in Australia is it evident why this is it evident why different music is popular here due to the weather? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. We're used to charging down country lanes with howling winds and kind of crazy cliffscapes, and you're trudging through fields, and it's you're putting on five mil wetsuits with hoods and gloves, and yeah. you're driving down to the sea, obviously listening to that kind of darker stuff like real emotive stuff and that certainly comes out in my writing I love just tucking away while the wind's going nuts outside and you're like in a little candle lit yeah. kind of shack um, 
but then you get here and it's like I don't think I wore a t-shirt for like <laughs> first week. My, I lost my shoes a week ago, and mm. that hasn't mattered once. Well, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can, I mean, driving down to like amazing places like this, and people cruising on longboards and stuff, you can see how, like I'd say, both of our music's so impacted by the surf world, but our music's so different, which is quite a strange. Thing really, but awesome. No, and it's not saying I would have. It's not saying that, uh, again because we're so immersed in our culture, surf culture here, that you wouldn't. I didn't put two and two together on that so clearly as when you said it that you know there's different landscapes have formed different sorts of music that surfing communities particularly are um, very fond of. Yeah. Your what would you say are some common themes in your music you released so far? People obviously here in Australia been hearing these latest songs on yeah. various times at Triple J um, <laughs> yeah. and at all the shows, but. What do you think are some recurring themes in your music? Um, certainly the the overall vibe is quite, I guess, quite dark. <laughs> and drifting is, I think drifting is like the epitome of what that's all about. And that was written about, I was kind of, kind of felt pretty lost <laughs> in yeah. the music world. Um, it's actually the very first thing I did on January the 1st, two thousand. 17 I wrote that song at 10 in the morning it was the first thing I did that year <laughs> and uh, it was written about looking in the mirror I guess and seeing that something's wrong but seeing yourself through somebody else's eyes and not being able to do anything about it mm. and I think that there's themes of that throughout the music that sneaks into all or nothing um, but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of an overarching theme and I was, I was actually writing something yesterday about mental health in the music world and it's, I was talking to you about it, some petrifying stats of 68.5% like of all musicians have experienced anxiety and 72% depression. And it's yeah, those, when you, obviously not a lot of boys who are <laughs> playing Wii tennis, whatever it is back there. Um, no, it's it's absolutely incredible. I think I think what's interesting with music is that you, and I certainly see it in your music, is that I feel maybe responsible too much sometimes to write songs about the good stuff, the happy times, and almost yeah. and certainly have not felt as comfortable as you have. And I see, and I think it's a real, as in hats off to you, to really express some of that dark stuff, because it's really important to you, because people... We all go through it, yeah. and I think it's an incredible thing that musicians sometimes might be able to talk about it to a friend or talk about it to family, but they can very well write about it in a song and play it to thousands of people. Yeah, it's like a, uh, it's like, it's incredible the way the music minds work. But I think um, in your music, what do you think has been the most challenging song to write that you released so far? Was it drifting? Yeah, I think that was certainly the most honest one that was yeah. and when you and you'll have songs like it as well when you really lay it out there and you're like right I'm going to put this out to the world now <laughs> yeah. there's no going back Absolutely. that's quite I was actually just thinking when you were saying that it's quite awesome that when we're playing together I'm coming on and doing the like <laughs> this is kind of dark this is and then you finish it off with like everyone <laughs> singing along it's quite a nice little kind of emotional roller coaster for the for the fans. No, it's in, it's in, it's incredibly important important to have both. How much do you feel <laughs> in your writing? <laughs> well, those boys having a good laugh. How much do you think? Um, is there a time where you, particularly with close loved ones around, have wanted to withhold a certain amount from your writing? Do you consider those things? Yeah, there's certainly there's certainly a fair few crossed out lyrics that you. you I guess there's so much pressure these days to live with your life online and share everything on social media and whatever and I think yeah it got gets to a point where you're like is this too much is this is this unfair on the person is this unfair on absolutely I couldn't agree more I think that everybody not just musicians I think are at this really odd point of uh, m common common folk are literally living their lives like superstars because everybody, yeah. not just us, are posting a like, huge passion, like 90, whatever percent of their lives online. 
Um, for you, and I, what I feel like drifting was when I listened to that song, um, I feel like it was almost you, whether you knew it or not. I felt as borderline like you prophesizing what was to happen in your life. Even though I didn't have context at the time that song was released, I felt like when I listened to that song, it was like, you know, obviously with the chorus being, I can feel it coming. It was like for you, it was outlining some things you kind of had an inkling were gonna gonna happen. Do you think that in your writing and in songwriting, do you th do you think there's a, a a point where you write about things you wish to happen or write about things that you don't don't see until the months or the years pass and then it clicks? Yeah, I think you. I think through playing, I imagine you have the same that like in the music world you you've almost played out what you think is going to come because you plan so far ahead with releases with like shows you know what you're doing months in advance and I think you've almost already played that out in your head before it even happens mm. and I hear you're right that was exactly a reflection of what was to come in a few months mm. and but yeah it was not, that was one of those songs that just fell into place it was like a 15 second sorry 15 minute song yeah it was just it literally just arrived and it gets to the point where you're like is this already a song <laughs> yeah. am I just singing a, a Bruce Springsteen song or something <laughs> no absolutely it's a there's very few times but when those songs come about and you sit there and like you said like that 15 minute thing and you look back on a page and you've just gone okay yeah. well that kind of happened and you hear different people talk about how songs come through it's not like sometimes you yeah. make them they literally just come through um, I remember Noel Gallagher saying he believes that songs are dropped from the sky and if he doesn't catch them, Chris Martin's catching them for go So he's out of take the love. <laughs> well, and can you tell us but you know, what what's two thousand and nineteen got in store for you? What's two thousand nineteen for Nathan Ball personally and in your music? Music wise we've got well, we'll finish this tour with you. Yeah. It's been an absolute dream. Uh, we get back home, a couple of weeks rest, straight on to Europe then a few more f a few festivals over the summer then I think we'll go do another Europe tour and then I think back out here maybe avoid the UK winter for as long as possible okay very good um, personally wise I think just continue to enjoy it I had probably the best year ever last year absolutely loved every minute of it and was certainly the happiest I've felt and here the other day, I we'd had that surf at Phillip Island, yeah. and I was walking out and just started laughing to myself. I was like, "This is the happiest I've like, ever felt. This is mm. just feels awesome." And so I hope to continue along that theme. Uh, I hope as well. And for people who are already Nathan Ball fans, or people who have stumbled across you this tour, or perhaps through this video, got some more songs coming. Do we think this year? Yeah, a couple things to be seen. Mid March, I believe, is another one. Okay, very good. Um, that's an exclusive for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to decide when that comes out. Yeah. Hopefully we don't get any trouble for saying yeah. that. Um, and for people, where can they find your music and follow your story and find, and you are going to be touring internationally this year, so where can they find out more about you? Uh, Spotify, Instagram, all Nathan Wool, Nathan Wool Music. Um, Apple Music, yeah, it's everywhere. I, I think I've spammed the entire internet with it. So. Okay. And do you have, before we leave, what's one thing that you think would improve the music? I'm not going to say the music industry, so to speak, but in music, is there one thing that you say that you've observed that with mental health, for example, what would improve that for musicians, do you think? If there's one thing before we go. I think just opening up about it and talking about it a lot more, it's it's quite easy to feel, especially when you're a singer-songwriter, you, you're on your own a lot and you, mm. like, you, you play a festival like your Fools Fest where you play to God knows how many people and then you come off that stage that night and you're like in a hotel room on your own and it's yeah. that like juxtaposition of everyone is there to see you but you feel very lonely in that yeah. space it's quite a weird thing but then so as a musician you feel that you feel like you're on your own mm. whereas like Everyone else is in the crowd. Everyone else is with their friends. Everyone, yeah, yeah. you're you are getting a seeing a little a little peek in on yeah. on everyone else doing their thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what being on the stage is. <laughs> yeah, but then and also like musician wise, you feel like you're on your own 
because you don't get to talk about it with many people but then I think due to some horrendous high profile deaths like Avicii's one and the Linkin Park front man it's I think more and more people are talking about it and and I think fans are beginning to understand like people cancelling tours due to like mental health issues is I think fans are finally getting on board and being like ah oh, fair enough we want you to be well enough to tour for another 10 years rather than scrape through this one 100 percent, and that's i think a really important point you touched on is that it comes that you have to initiate the communication as a musician you have to you can't just expect people to understand why you're not coming out into the crowd tonight yeah, yeah why yeah. you are cancelling that tour why you might need a break why you might not be wanting to take the photo when you're having dinner with half a burrito in your mouth kind of thing all those things is that you can't you have to just communicate and I agree with you there is a more and more a coming a time which is really beautiful from some of these really hard things and some of these tragic things that have happened I think what's beautiful about it is that there is more and more understanding of that that person that you see on stage as a human being yeah. and that they've got their own run of things and that what you talked about was the word jux juxtaposition juxtaposition yeah, yeah. wow um, <laughs> I'll have to learn that thing after that, that alone is something that I think anybody who's gone through it it's the it's a bizarre thing um, yeah it's absolutely so it's nathan um i love hearing those points that you touched on thank you very much for having a cup of tea with me thank you for having and, me uh, <laughs> and let's look forward to these last shows cheers <laughs> catch us again soon cheers <laughs> <laughs>